Paso. The chaos on the bridge of the Americas is over. Farmers have stopped blocking traffic. More on what they agreed to. A police officer taking down a high school student in class and the video is viral. That officer is under investigation right now. And happening today, City Council will discuss the fate of the Abraham Chavez Theater. Will it be turned into a Hispanic cultural center? Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. Rise and shine and good morning to you El Paso, Las Cruces and Juarez. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning everyone. Let's go ahead and start things off by checking in with Crystal. Yes, and Crystal, it's starting off to be a really nice day today. It absolutely is. That coolness in the morning. In fact, temperatures are almost the same as they were yesterday in some areas. We're at 48 in Las Cruces, 53 in El Paso, 46 in Redoso and Deming, and 45 in Silver City. Nice but cool start to your morning. And as we get into the afternoon, it will be very similar to yesterday, but warmer outside. On our clouds and radar map, also like yesterday, it is clear as we move across the map, no rain for us to track and really not much cloud coverage for us to track either. Today, still plenty of sun, but in the next few days, we start to build in more clouds. We start to pull in more moisture. We are tracking our next storm system. So we'll take a look at when that chance of rain really does increase. There is a focal point on the seven day forecast. It's coming up. Thanks so much, Crystal. And happening right now, police are investigating a serious crash on the east side. This is over by the intersection of George Dieter and Edgemere. And good morning, El Paso's Denise Olivas is live with the very latest from the scene. Denise, what can you tell us? Uh, good morning, Hillary. Well, we have changed locations and we are now somewhat closer to where this single vehicle wreck happened. We are just south of the intersection of George Dieter and Edgemere. As you can see behind me, um, police officers still blocking off the entire, uh, both, uh, both northbound and southbound lanes of George Dieter. As you can see, these cars are being diverted into a residential area. And now giving you, let's give you a, a better look at the wreck. Now we know one car was involved and it appears that it was possibly heading, uh, it was heading south on George Dieter. And as you can see, those special traffic investigators have been here. They were called out just before 4 o'clock. We know the wreck happened at about 2.30. And as you can see, the car, it, it is unrecognizable. Just a mangled piece of metal right now that ended up on the median of George Dieter. So again, we know that one person was transported to a local hospital in serious condition. Right now, it's still unclear of, of their, of the of the victim's condition or of the driver's condition. We do know that um, special traffic investigators are expected to be out here for several hours. So again, this could be some major traffic issues this morning, especially in this part of town where it gets very busy at this intersection of George Dieter and Edgemere. So if you are heading south on Edgemere, you can you can go west on Tanaha and then south on Running Deer, and that'll take you eventually back to Pebble Hills. Or you can take one of the main parallel avenues that uh, go um, parallel to George Dieter, that'd be Lee Trevino, or even Saul Kleinfeld if you're trying to get to Montana or even I-10. But as soon as we get any more information, we'll pass that along to you this morning. For now, we're live in East El Paso. Denise Olivas, ABC7. Thanks so much, Denise, for that live update. And developing right now, good news for anyone trying to cross the Bridge of the Americas. The protest that shut down the port of entry is now over. Yesterday, though, a group of Mexican farmers took over the southbound lanes of the Mexican side of the Bridge of the Americas. Traffic was blocked for hours. According to El Diario, the farmers left late last night after accepting a proposal to meet with federal officials in Mexico City. They are camping out now in Jamizal Park. El Diario also reports the farmers are upset over low market prices for their farm products. The farmers also say they're upset because American produce is imported into Mexico where it competes with homegrown products. Happening today, El Paso City Council is expected to discuss the proposed Hispanic Cultural Center. The committee supporting it will tell city reps why it should be housed at the Abraham Chavez Theater. It also asks it to have a budget of five and a half million dollars. Now, voters approved the building in 2012 as part of the Quality of Life bond projects. Sunday night on ABC 7 Extra, City Manager Tommy Gonzalez said the project is being put at the very top of the project's list. We'll have a crew at City Council today and we'll let you know what city reps decide. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says sanctuary cities need to end. The phrase has no legal meaning, but it's typically used to describe local governments that ban police from asking about a person's immigration status. Abbott is calling for an anti-sanctuary cities law. 
He wants the Republican-controlled legislature to take up the issue in 2017. Proposals to get rid of sanctuary cities have been opposed by various sheriffs. Sheriff Richard Wiles says undocumented immigrants who are the victims of crime will not be willing to come forward if they're afraid deputies will ask about their immigration status. A video from South Carolina is raising a lot of eyebrows this morning. The video shows a school resource officer in Columbia slamming a girl to the ground. School and law enforcement officials confirm the video shows Deputy Ben Fields asking a girl to stand up from her desk, but the girl stayed seated. So Fields then wrapped a forearm around her neck, tipped the chair backwards until the girl fell to the ground, and then he tossed the girl several feet across the floor to the front of the classroom. And that is where he handcuffed her. The school district has suspended Deputy Fields pending an investigation. Trial continues today for a woman accused of strangling her husband with an apron. Police arrested Martha Acevedo back in September of 2014. The woman's daughter-in-law testified in court. Valerie Royball hinted at a possible abusive relationship, saying she remembered Acevedo having bruises and black eyes. Acevedo sat quietly in court, listening to a Spanish translation of the English testimony. Her son's wife broke down in tears when she told the jury, quote, she loved that man so much no matter what he did. In our age, no one would stay in that kind of relationship, but she did. It is 6.06 .06 and we're taking a look at our TxDOT traffic cameras. Pretty quiet over there at I-10 and Horizon in Far East El Paso. I-10 and Harnos looks like things are a little bit busier, but no problems to tell you about in that particular area. And keep in mind that this week I-10 East will be closed from Piedras to Copia and that's starting at 9 p.m. and doesn't open until 6 a.m. Meaning you'll have to exit I-10 East at Piedras. Again, that's every night through Thursday. And still to come here on Good Morning El Paso. Donald Trump is losing his Republican frontrunner status, at least in Iowa. More on who's beating him now. And the NMSU Aggies desperate for a win. Will Coach Martin keep his job? But first, let's go ahead and talk weather because that always puts a smile on everyone's face, at least recently, right? Yes, it's been so nice out there, Crystal. And we continue with the nice conditions, at least a bit longer than we are tracking those changes. We'll talk a little more about that coming up. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.